Hey there, I'm Jordan with EasyPC, and today we're going to be showing you how to install Rust Oxide on your Rust server. Now let's get into the video. So the first step is to make sure you have a running Rust server. If you made it to this video somehow without making your Rust server, then check out our full Rust server guide linked on screen. Next, go to the UMod website to download Rust Oxide. That'll be linked in the description below. Once you have it downloaded, open it and go to your Rust server folder. Then from there, go to Steam Apps, Common, and Rust Dedicated. Now drag the Rust dedicated data folder from the downloaded file into your server folder and replace the files in the destination. From here, go ahead and load up the server and you should notice a couple of things new being loaded and a couple of new folders will appear in your Rust server folder like the Oxide folder that'll house all of your plugins. While that's all starting up, we might as well go download some plugins. Head back to the UMod website and up at the top, go to the Plugins tab, then select Rust. Sorting by most mod downloads is the best way to get some of the better plugins in my opinion. Here we're going to download Gather Manager which allows you to change the number of items obtained from resource gathering. Click on it, hit the download button. And when it's download, it's as simple as dragging and dropping the CS file into your plugins folder. While the server is running to make sure that all the plugins are being picked up, Type the command oxide.reload and then a star. And you'll see it tells us that it's loaded the gathering manager plugin. Now if we go to config, there will be a gathering manager.json. Open it with a text editor and you can modify all the plugin settings. If you want to check what any of this jarble does, go back to the umod page to find a list of commands and what they do. If you pick out a command, copy and paste it into the console and hit enter. It'll change whatever parameter the command is set to. Now is also probably a good time to set yourself as an admin, and for that you'll need your Steam ID. Go to your personal Steam page and look for the link at the top. Select the numbers after profiles and copy that. If you don't see those numbers for whatever reason, copy the page URL and head to a service like Steam ID, and then from there copy the community ID. We'll leave a link to Steam ID in the description below. Now in the server console, we'll type owner ID, the Steam ID, and then you can add an optional username and reason if you want to use either of those. But uh, keep in mind that if you want to use spaces in either the username or the reason, you have to add inverted commas on either side. Once you're finished with that, press enter. And just make sure before you turn the server off that you save the config with the command server.writecfg so you don't have to re-admin yourself every time you start the server. Now if you type in quit to turn off the server, everything should be ready for you to start up and reconnect to. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. This has been Jordan from EasyPC, signing out.